Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Democracy 3. Because right now, the UK is not doing so well at the whole democracy and politics and general political competence thing. Pretty much every major party's fallen apart. Pretty much every major political institution has undergone major upheaval. We're just not doing very well. So it felt like a good time to get back into Democracy 3 so I can just show everyone how it's bloody doing. And indeed there's some new DLC, electioneering, that thing in particular that we in Britain appear to be very, very bad at at the moment. Bloody hell. Let's just dive into this. There's some new stuff in Democracy 3 anyway. I love Democracy 3. Obviously we'll be playing as the United Kingdom because that's the country we need to bloody fix. The UK is also an active member of the- No! No, we need to fix that. Please fix devs. And I've decided to play as the People's Party where the opposition is the People's Front because that pretty much sums up how British politics is going at the moment. So welcome to the UK where health's not great, education's not great, crime's appalling, unemployment's appalling, poverty's pretty bad and the GDP is terrible. Marvellous, that sounds all about right. So yeah, the thing that they've just added in through the new DLC electioneering, you can now actually engage in stuff as pertains to your political party. So manifestos and speeches we'll be able to do when we get close to the next election. Perceptions is a kind of interesting one. So basically stuff that you do impacts how people view you on a couple of kind of important metrics, trustworthiness, strength and compassion. So if I kind of go into compassion, like the reason why people see us as compassionate is because in this country you're like, you start off with some child benefits and some foreign aid, which kind of impact how people see you in terms of compassion. But say we, we're bad on strength because, for example, there's a bit of organised crime and street gangs. So because like there's some crime problems, therefore people see us as a little bit weak. And you can perform stunts that you can only you can perform these literally only once. Uh, once you've done them in a parliament, I think after like this parliament's over, like after the four years, there's another election. You can presumably do these over again. I haven't actually checked that. So it takes a little bit of political capital to do, but not very much. If it works, it'll knock you up kind of on that kind of metric 21%, or if you fail, it'll go down 21%, and of course, 75% chance to succeed. You can go for like ones that are bigger, but they can go worse. So you can invite TV cameras into your home, but of course, that has a bigger chance of completely backfiring if they discover you've got like, I don't know, a kitchen made out of gold or something. So that's a 50-50 shot, but it can pay off very nicely and doesn't even take that much political capital. So yeah, for trustworthiness, you can release tax returns, televise a cabinet meeting or invite cameras into your home. For compassion, you can visit care homes, visit orphanage or help at a food bank. Strength is my favourite. The media stunts for strength are drive a tank, land on an aircraft carrier or train with the army. Interestingly, there is a 20% failure chance for landing on an aircraft carrier, which just made me think what happens in that 20%? Does the Prime Minister just crash? but sort of mysteriously survive, but managed to, I don't know, crash the plane to the side of the boat and thus sink an aircraft carrier. Because that would be brilliant, although admittedly that would potentially hurt your reputation slightly more than 20% on trustworthiness. This is apparently important for floating voters. There's also fundraising, I haven't really kind of figured out how that works yet, but there is now fundraising, which is kind of interesting. So some of that will come in as we go through the parliament, and I've had a thought about this. For those of you that are new to Democracy 3, by the way, this is broadly how it works. You have a certain amount of political capital per turn, that's defined by how good your cabinet is. It's kind of made up of all these people. Some of them are really good at their jobs like this bloke. Some of them are really quite bad at their jobs like this woman. You could fire her, but if you like fire someone, like everyone's goes down a bit, so it's never worth it. You just want to wait until you want to do a complete reshuffle. But right now, you've got to take that into account. You have a certain amount of income, which obviously you can change through things like taxes. And you've got a certain amount of expenditure that you can change by just changing any of the individual policies and a massive debt. And the markets don't like having a massive debt. All these in the middle are different types of voters, some of whom like you, some of whom don't. Hover over them to see which policies are affecting them, green positively, red negatively. Meanwhile, hover over any individual like policy or thing to see what it is impacting it and what it itself is impacting. So it gets very, very complicated, especially when you look at things like GDP, because GDP is affected by a lot and affects a lot. So yeah, that one's quite important. Another really quite odd thing about this game, by the way, um, is you have to keep track of your popularity, because that basically means, are you going to win the election? That's your kind of, I'm going to win an election line. You need to kind of get enough of the vote to win the election. Though actually, it doesn't quite work like Britain does, because there's a weird two-party system in this game where you kind of have to get 50% of the vote, because all there seems to be is you, the opposition, and didn't bother coming out to vote. 
Despite the fact that Britain has quite a few different parties, like loads of people in Scotland vote for the SNP, and some people somewhere vote for the Liberal Democrats, still apparently I don't bloody know. And then there's UKIP, and then there's the fringe parties on the right, and then there's the joke protest parties. Yeah, but no one in this game votes for any of those, so you've kind of just got to get to 50%. But even though, like, you just won an election, you start off with um, a value of 10.65% voting intention. Like, surely, you know, like... At least in this country, 36 odd percent of people must have voted for me because I just won an election. Democracy 3 is a bit odd like that, so you're not allowed to just coast, you actually have to actively work to get your popularity up high enough. And I've had a thought about how we might be able to do that. Because what I always do in Democracy 3 is I just kind of tinker. You tinker with little things and you try and make little compromises and little savings and little expenditure somewhere else, and it never works. Because the problem is, you've got to fix the economy. Then you've got this massive debt of £817 billion right here. That's a very, very big debt. So what I've thought is, I'm going to try something a bit different today. I'm going to try and fix the debt first, and then we fix everything else. And the way I'm going to do that is through taxation. Lots of taxation. So we've got income tax here, which also doesn't work. It, always, it bugs me in this game how income tax is like one thing rather than there being like lower, middle and upper rate. Like what if I wanted to like increase the upper rate of tax, but not the lower rate of tax? And why can't I change personal allowances? That should be a thing in this game. So like even if I were to kind of whack this up to like 90% tax, we've got a problem. That only nets me like 180 billion extra per quarter. Now that's, that's all right, but surely we can do a little bit better than that. Plus, no one likes income tax being increased, so we've got to come up with a cleverer idea than that. But to get enough political capital to do it, I'm going to need to start off by just passing for a turn to just save up some political capital. So, next turn, credit rating downgrade. You see this, this is why we need to fix the economy in a hurry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here, look in tax, and where's what I'm looking for? Flat income tax. Here we are, flat income tax, that thing that occasionally people moot. It's a terrible idea because it's hugely regressive and generally means that like incredibly wealthy people get a massive tax cut and like lower middle earners get a massive tax rise, which is why it's quite a bad idea. However, I've come up with a compromise that's going to make everyone like my flat income tax. I'm going to impose a flat income tax, which therefore rich people want, so that's good, so they're happy but I'm going to set it at a rate that's 90%. So rich people are paying 90% income tax, which is what poorer people potentially want to do. So everybody's happy. Admittedly, some poorer people will also be paying 90% flat income tax, and that will be generating £306 billion a quarter. But that's fair. That strikes me as fair. If one person has to pay 90% tax, everyone has to pay 90% tax. Now, I've noticed this before. The reason I wanted to try this is I noticed a slightly odd thing in Democracy 3, which is... um. You would have thought that replaces income tax. It doesn't. Income tax is still there and still being levied at 41%. And when we introduce that flat tax, it doesn't actually seem to have any impact whatsoever on the income tax take. I'm double taxing, so I'm taxing everyone 90% of their income, and then whatever's left, I then tax at 41%. So I've got an effective tax rate of about 94.1%. Now, you'd think that would destroy the country, and you're probably right. I should probably check that, actually. You know what? I should probably introduce something else nice so that people aren't so upset about the new 94% tax rate. Here we go, a telecommuting initiative so people can work from home. Sure, I'm taxing you 94%, but now you can work from home via Skype. Done. See, the commuters are going to bloody love this, and it'll keep traffic off the road. This is better and better. Now, let's see what happens next turn as a result of this slightly insane idea. I swear this is going to work. Well, it's going to... it might work. I don't know. Okay, so unemployment has gone slightly up on account of the fact that everyone is now being taxed 94%. This has apparently had a negative impact on the number of jobs in the economy because some people have decided they can't afford to hire as many people because of the 94% tax rate. I was expecting that. That's fine. And right now, only 2% of people would vote for us at an election. I'm quite frankly amazed it's that high. I'd say we're doing good job. Meanwhile, debt protection or, yeah, limit the agencies. Limit those boo agencies. I hope those agencies were back because I just limited their activity. Right, onwards. Now, here we go. So we've now jumped to a surplus of 274 billion, meaning the debt has just dropped by about a third overnight. And the commuters really, really, really like us. The commuters are thrilled by the telecommuting initiative. Um, the capitalists are not so keen. Uh, the middle-income people are definitely not so keen. The wealthy 
The wealthy are weirdly not that bothered. Parents have decided they like us. I don't know why, but alright, fine. Now, we've got a small problem, which is, though I only need to do this for like, a year to sort out the debt and then just build up a massive reserve of funding, I kind of need to survive that year because, um, yeah, security is a bit of an issue. Nobody's joining. You see, this is the problem. I'm taking advantage of something in Democracy 3 here, which is Democracy 3 doesn't expect you to do really, really massive, ridiculous, stupid changes. So when you make big changes, like things shift slowly. Like the f simple fact is like if you actually implemented 94% tax, the country would collapse overnight. The government would collapse overnight. One of those two things would happen, probably both. But because the kind of Democracy Theory isn't anticipating me doing something so ridiculously stupid, as a result of that, like, instead people just slowly become annoyed with me, and slowly change over time. So that's absolutely fine. Now what we should probably do at this point is, how bad is my cabinet? It's not great, but we don't need to worry about it yet. Um, I need to survive. So what I need to do is I need to massively fund my intelligence services to keep myself alive. So we're going to start funding that. And the way we're going to keep people happy is now that we've got this massive surplus, I'm going to basically start funding everything. Because it takes a lot of political capital to cut things that people like. But it takes almost no political capital to increase funding to things. That's good, you know, people like money being spent on things they like. And that means I can get things up that way. Now, what else can I do? I can just kind of spend some money on, where's the health service? Is that the NHS? That's the NHS. Everyone likes the NHS. And you see, that can be raised at 18. So if I increase that to excellent healthcare for absolutely everyone, then that goes up, yeah, that's like only like 20 billion more a quarter. I've got a surplus of 270 billion a quarter. So I can make the NHS as well as it can. Like when you get sick in this country now, we send a doctor and a team of nurses to your house. That's what we're going to be doing here in Johnland. So yep, confirm that political capital. Absolutely perfect. Everyone's going to love that. Let's move on to the next turn. And I imagine if I'm right, this turn, here we are. The credit rating is upgraded because the game gets a bit confused. The credit rating would really be being downgraded in real life because this is blatant economic suicide and insanity. But because the debt's going down and we're running a surplus, this game just says, oh, I guess you should just, you know, increase the credit rating. So now it's just jumped from BBB to AAA. So that's lovely, isn't it? Uh, the people who are supporting us is up to 3%, that's fine. There's a superhero, that's nice. And he's fighting crime, better and better. So very soon we're actually going to be into... Uh, yeah, we've almost wiped out the debt. We'll have almost wiped out the debt next time. We've stopped going down. Let's check the security situation, because that's where things are going to go wrong. Oh, this is interesting. I was kind of expecting the business first to jump up more aggressively than that. I should probably invest more down here. Uh, in things like, you know, ID cards, detention without trial, curfews, armed police, to make sure we're safe, safe from, like, people attacking us. Also, I should probably... This would be a good time for me to just completely reshuffle the cabinet, to be honest. Yeah, let's reshuffle the cabinet. Right, let's have a look see what we got here. Oh, this is interesting. They've gained a new stat. Everyone in your team used to have experience and loyalty. Now they've got campaigning, which I'm assuming is related to how much money you get. So that's nice. All right, there we are. That's a much better cabinet. Unfortunately, no one good wanted law and order, possibly because everyone's seen there might be about to be a massive explosion of rioting on the streets in the face of the 94% tax rate, but that's fine. That's fine. I should do something for the middle-income people, by the way. What can I do for you? Oh, apparently they're upset by the flat income tax. Oh, here's stuff we can do. We can introduce some fun new stuff like grants. Let's introduce like small business grants. They'll like that. Yep, business grants. And we can fund everything to the maximum because, you know, we've got absolutely tons of money. And a welfare fraud department. Apparently that's popular with 92% of voters. So we'll totally implement that. Yep, undercover investigation officers. It's only slightly dystopian. Marvelous. Right, keep going. We should be pretty much out of debt by next turn. Tax evasion. I cannot believe people would evade the 94% tax rate. What a bunch of bastards. On the plus side, health is improving because of the massive input we've actually uh, put into the NHS, which is lovely. The self-employed is starting to become happy. The farmers are happy. Why are the farmers happy? Food Standards Agency, that's a good point. We should probably... Ooh, yeah, let's just start whacking stuff up here. Let's... Uh, particle accelerators for science. Science gets particle accelerators. Great. Food Standards Agency, that gets maximised. Liberals like that, it's good for health. Good, let's use that. Uh, what else have we got? Where's the state education system? There it is, that's got shared textbooks right now. Now everyone gets their own laptops. Beautiful. And that basically doesn't have any negative impacts. It impacts poverty. It seems 
to reduce unemployment because there's more teachers and stuff and everyone really likes it. Yes, totally. Invest massively in the state schools. We're eating into the surplus, but we're funding important stuff that people actually like. Also, I should probably increase the police at some point because it looks like there's some sort of problem with crime or something. Never mind, we'll do that soon. What have we got? Child labour laws. Criminalise that, it's probably bad. Now, GM crops. Yes, allow those, they're 100% fine. Next up, we are into... Good! We've actually got ourselves out of debt. There is now no more debt. We've taken care of the debt. Now, we've got a small, small problem of unemployment, which is probably, to be honest, literally everyone. Here we are, unemployment. And unemployment is unfortunately fueling racial tension, street gangs, all sorts of bad things. Well, if we improve the GDP, unemployment will improve. That's the biggest driver. Right now, literally no one will vote for us. Okay, I admit that's a bit of a concern. Okay, thing everyone cares about. Crime. Nobody likes crime. How do we solve crime? Probably by funding the police like crazy. More community policing. That is literally free to raise. It just costs money. Yes, there's basically no political capital cost there. Traditional police. Do the same. That costs four to raise. You see, just an extra five billion. Shove that in there. We'll just fund literally. Like, you can fund things so easy. Once you've got a ton of money, now I've got these reserves and this surplus. I can basically whack everything up to the top. What else do people like? Jury trials. People like jury trials. That costs half a billion. Go. Liberals love it. Now, poor earnings. That was causing me a problem in terms of this general strike thing. How are we going to increase poor earnings? Now, this is interesting. Rail subsidies. I could give them a tax cut. Instead, we'll just put a ton of money into rail subsidies. Maximum rail subsidies. Perfect. And next up, let's start ever so slightly lowering the flat tax. Right now, we've got a surplus of 150 billion. I'd like to have to a little bit. Let's just lower that just a little bit. There we are. If we lower that to like, yeah, it's starting at 260. If I just move that to about like here, from 90 down to like 60, we've still got plenty of money to throw around. Yeah, if we just lower that by, lower that by 100, then we've still got 50 billion a quarter to throw around. Apply that. We've just given you an absolutely massive tax cut. This is basically the principle where if you punch someone in the face 100 times a minute for an hour and then you reduce that to 80 times a minute, then suddenly that feels like a really good thing. You've done them a favour. That's what I'm doing. You see, the middle income is starting to come round. State employees, lovers, the wealthy are coming round. <laughs> or at least relative to how they were. How's the security situation, by the way? Under control. Oddly, I wasn't really expecting that. We're about halfway through the parliament right now and... Still only 0.1% of people are planning to vote for us. We need to really throw some money at some people here. Activate stuff that everyone likes. Here we are. Free school meals. Maximum funding. Beautiful. University grants. Everyone likes those. Generous grants for everyone. Maybe not generous grants. Hang on, hang on. We should make those to be like... Who likes those? Lots of people like middle earners like those as well. State employees, education. Actually, we're increasing the number of state employees and state employees like us. Perfect. Yes, this will increase youth income. That's probably a good thing. Let's go for grants for all, but they don't need to be generous. We'll save two billion there. Done. Technology grants. Apparently people like those. Yes, huge technology grants. Let's get technology going up. We want to become the white furnace for technology in the future. Move on. This is all going to start working for me pretty soon. Poverty's declining. Health's looking good. Crime's under control. UN ambassador. Popular figure on the international stage. Reputation for solving difficult problems through compromise and understanding. Yes, perfect. And I tell you what, this is all starting to feed through very, very nicely right now. You'll notice that the voting intentions are indeed starting to swing slightly in our favour. Which, I mean, 3% of the country. But, you know, that's better than previously. Where can we save some money, by the way? Where's the bloody military? How much do we spend on 27 billion? No, 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 no. I think we can get rid of that. Let's just make them reservists. Yeah, some reservists. That's absolutely fine. We'll save ourselves like 20 billion doing that. Perfect. Okay, what policies are popular? So we can just whack them up. Policies that are popular. Prisons. Everyone apparently likes prisons. Uh, recycling. Everyone likes recycling. Okay, that's fine. We'll just spend a bit more money on that. Environmentalist, the environment. Good, good, good. Yep, perfect. We'll increase the prisons later. Apparently, oh yes, if we increase prisons, that'll be perfect. Yes, move straight on. How's the cabinet, by the way? You all, you're doing all right. Yeah, you're all fine. That's all fine. Move on. 
Vigilante mobs is now at an end. Do we still have that problem with the general strike? Is that... Oh, yes. As soon as the general strike ends, then GDP will shoot up. This is going to go very, very nicely. We just need to take care of... Yeah, we just need to make a very slight improvement to Porins. Because as soon as the blue line drops below the stop trigger, the green line, then we will be good. And this is costing a lot of money, by the way. Yeah, unemployment, trade unions, poor... Okay, poor earnings. We just need to do more about poor earnings. Child benefit. That could be a good thing to whack up. Yeah, there we are. Whack that right up. Lots of people like that. Popularity has just risen to 9.7%. Okay, I just need to end this general strike, and then we're going to be in really good shape. Organised crime will get rid of slowly over time. That's fine. The intelligence services are going to have an impact on that, because they're already very, very good. Uh, street gangs. How are we going to get rid of that? Unemployment. Okay, if unemployment sorts out, we'll be all right. CCTV cameras have a negative effect. Well, I think we're already funding those, like, pretty damn well, so we don't need to worry about that right now. Let's whack up bus lanes. Buy bus lanes. That's cheap, and people seem to like it. Road building. Do that. Oh, that's expensive. That's weirdly expensive. Let's not build roads. That'll encourage people to use their cars. We don't want that. You notice the surplus is actually going up, which is nice. I think the income's going up because this is starting to feed through. Everyone's starting to admit, actually, this John, he knows what he's talking about. This is starting to work. Ooh, youth club subsidies. That feels like a really, really good solution to the problem of the street gangs, doesn't it? Yes, youth income, crime. Yeah, crime goes down, socialist parents and the youth like it. Totally whacked that up. It costs like a billion a quarter. Done. Absolutely fine. And healthy food subsidies, not necessarily that popular. However, it costs almost nothing and it's going to have an effect on... Ooh, poor earnings. Yes, that's what I need to be kind of going up to stop that bloody general strike. Yes, this is perfect. Right, what else have we got? Freedom of information request. Yes, that's absolutely fine. Freedom of information is a good thing. I'm glad we have it in this country now. Next up, what have we got? Local blockbuster. No, those have all long since gone out of business, I'm afraid. Oh, no. This is very good. There's been a local film and GDP and foreign relations and tourism have all shot up. Marvellous. Thank you very much, Hugh Grant. You're in the middle of your term of government and the current size of the People's Party is zero. The opposition party has more members than us. Apparently, literally no one is in our party right now, which I admit is a bit of a problem. Yeah, we have actually no members and no activists, whereas the People's Front, our opposition have 3 million activists and 29 million members, which in some ways feels like they've kind of got the edge on us for the moment at least. But we're getting close to the highest we've ever been with 14% of people actually willing to vote for us. That's a good thing. Right, next up, what can we do here? We've still got 13 billion in surplus. I need to find somewhere to splurge some money. Also, I need to be a little bit concerned about the fact that the Battenberg group, the hardcore extreme capitalists, are getting angry at me. We need to do something about them. Oh yes, I think we've done it. It looks to me like next turn the general strike will be over, which will be much, much better for the country. That will work very, very nicely for everyone, in fact. Now what are we going to do to help get the capitalists off our back a little bit? What are they worried about? They're worried about clean energy subsidies and agricultural subsidies. Okay, we can get rid of some of that. That's all 100% fine. Let's just lower the nice agricultural subsidies. Yeah, we can save ourselves five billion a year and also get the capitalists off our back. Beautiful. And we can also save half a billion simply by getting rid of some clean energy subsidies. We'll just scrap all of them. Lovely. Save some money, keep the capitalists on side. What else do you not like that I don't care about either? Some taxes are bothering them more than other. I wonder if I could just actually get rid of some of them taxes. Like how much do all these actually raise? Corporation tax, 14 billion. Sales tax, 21 billion. If I could just, maybe I could just cancel a tax. Maybe they'd like that. Yeah. Property tax. How much does that bring? 13 billion. I could lower that an awful, awful lot. If I lowered the property tax to 0%, then potentially that actually works. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're lowering that. We're just getting rid of that. We're just going to sacrifice some money by lowering the property tax to almost nothing. That will hopefully buy us a bit of grace with those guys. Capitalist plot. Okay. Ooh. Hello. General strikes to an end. Unemployment's improving. Crime's going down. GDP's working. The stupid plan is starting to work. No, don't allow the toxic waste dump. Do, do you really need to come with me for that one? Don't come to me for that. That's a terrible idea. Good. The capitalists are starting to come round. This is excellently good news. 
Now, the ah, the surplus has jumped to 20 billion because with the general strikes to end, we've got a load more money to throw around at the moment. Good, good, good. Now, where can we sink that in order to make the capitalists even happier? Actually, we just need to work on the general population right now. Eye tests. Eye tests for everyone. Perfect. The poor love the eye test. Poor earnings up. Retired up. Health up. Good. Eye tests. Good. We like the eye tests. Prisons. We wanted to increase that, didn't we? Yes, whack up the prisons to maximum. Liberals, conservatives, state employees, state employee membership, perfect. Unemployment goes down. Crime goes down. Yes, extensive rehabilitation. That's what a prison system should be doing. Marvellous. Up to 20% of the population almost willing to vote for us. Yes, this is good. We've still got time to salvage this mess. Crime is having a bad effect on a load of things. And crime is being fairly heavily fed into by street gangs. Why can't I get rid of these bloody street gangs? It's all about unemployment and poverty, unfortunately. There's not much I can do to solve that otherwise. Well, I guess I could... How much does it cost to... Yeah, increase the flipping face recognition software on the CCTV cameras. Perfect. Just solve the crime problem. Oh, dear. The, um... They've kind of started trying to kill me, unfortunately. Lone sniper, high-tech rifle, 200 feet from where I was planning to meet some teachers. Wiretapping! That would help. Let's get some wiretapping going on here. Wiretapping. Implement. Make it ridiculously big. Oh, it's going to have a big impact on crime and organised crime. Why didn't I do this years ago? Apply those changes. Perfect. Kind of at this point, I'm just trying to not die. That would be a useful thing. I just need to not die for a few turns. More capitalist plots. Yep. Scientific discovery. Perfect. The patriots and the GDP like the scientific discovery. <gasps> Street gangs have been sorted. Yes. Yes. That is my crime is falling through the floor. Health is going up. Poverty is going down. Who would have thought that a 94% tax rate could solve everything this efficiently? Nice. The conservatives really like us. That's kind of odd. I wasn't really expecting that. Oh yeah. The Battenberg group's getting really, really dangerous. I kind of need to just put... Everything I can into surviving for a few turns, up to nearly 40% of the population is willing to vote for me. We could actually win this election, but I've just got to live long enough to see it happen. <laughs> um, keep keep pouring money into law and order. Police drones. Oh, tasers. Tasers. Oh, police drones are cheap. Yeah, totally. Do that. Police drones. Maximum police drones. Police drones bloody everywhere. Marvellous. At this point, we are adequately protected. It's not perfect, but the Liberals kind of like us. They'll be willing to forgive us a slight bit of police dystopia -y, hopefully. The surplus is also up to 130 billion because of the bad things that are coming to an end. We've suddenly made a ton of money. Well, that's fine. That means I can give all of you, like, massive tax cuts like crazy. How about income tax? We don't need to be taxing you flat income and income tax. Plus, income tax has a bad impact on everyone's earnings on the wealthy, the middle income. Yeah, this is a good thing to lower. So I've got 130 billion to throw away. I can, I could basically just abolish income tax and they'd love me for it. Now that's worth thinking about. It's like 150 now. Reduce that to like 50. That should have a really, really big impact. In fact, I could just cancel. If I cancelled it, it's probably a bit of a problem. You know, let's just lower it to about here. Lower it to 13% income tax. And hope they just don't notice or mind the whole fact that there's still the slight issue of flat tax at what? 60%? So what? The, the effective tax rate is what now at this point? Like 60% and then 10% on top of that. So 10% So it's like 64% effective tax rate. That's fine. That's a good tax rate. Food stamps. Everyone likes food stamps. Everyone loves food stamps. In fact, nobody minds food stamps. Even the capitalists don't mind it. Yeah, maximise them. Perfect. Everyone will like food stamps. Move on. Don't die. Capitalist plot. Organised crime just got ended. Need to ban animal testing. Yep, and now I can start doing campaign speeches. Perfect. Um, yeah, ban the animal testing. Boo, wait. Is that for cosmetics or medicine? I don't know, I should have read that more clearly, shouldn't I? Never mind. Campaign speeches are available. Perfect. We can now start campaigning. We're up to 45%. We hit 50%. We've done it. The capitalists are a little bit happier with us. And are hopefully not going to attempt to murder me. Hopefully. In fact, actually, 
This is looking surprisingly good across the board. We've got massive reserves here. We should just throw money at everything. Okay, we've got new stuff. Let's start looking at the new stuff. So where are the problems? Um, there's not a massive problem, actually. We're actually doing okay for strength. Why is that jumped up? Um, oh, because I survived an assassination attempt. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so yeah, you just guys keep shooting at me. It actually is working in my favour. Trustworthiness... I've basically done nothing to deserve that one way or the other. And compassion people likes of child benefit food stamps. Food stamps shouldn't really be compassion. They're a bit of a sticking plaster over, like, you know, uh, bigger issues. Um, how's the fundraising going, by the way? I am making very little money next to my opponents, unfortunately. Speeches. Now, I can start making speeches. What do these speeches do? No manifesto. Yeah, let's have a look at this. So, that is speech. That is what? Uh, socialists. Plus socialist, but no, no, let's make a really pro-capitalist trade unionist. Where are the capitalists? I want to say something good to the capitalists, so they'll like me. Yes, capitalists, here we are. Say something that the capitalists will like, the socialists won't. The socialists are fine with us, we're making a lot of tax money right now. Where are the middle earners? Can we say something about this to the middle earners too? Yeah, say something to the wealthy who just apparently wander around wearing crowns. Uh, the poor won't be happy, but the poor are pretty happy already. Yep, fine. Just basically, I just want to direct this speech to everyone we actually... who doesn't like us, but the only people we're annoying are... Ooh, we can just actually, yeah, say something for the environmentalists. Oh, we can turn that one off. Okay, so you can only say four things maximum. Fine. Um, what else are we going to annoy? I don't want to annoy the... What am I getting the self-employed on side, by the way? Oh, I could make the liberals happy by virtue of annoying the Conservatives. The Conservatives are really happy with us already, or I could just make the Cons... Yeah, you know what, let's get the Liberals happy. So we're going to make the Liberals, the Capitalists, the Wealthy, and the Trade Unionists happy, but we're going to annoy the Self-Employed, the Poor, the Socialists, and the Conservatives. But they, those guys already really like us anyway, so it should be fine, and I kind of just want the... Oh, it's only a very minor increase, to be honest. Um, oh, no, that's the, that's the Trade Unionists. Oh, okay, I didn't see that it was like that. Uh, in that case... Let's just get the those guys up, because this one... Actually, if I just did both of these, I'd end up with a net benefit to both groups, because um, it would go up three, then minus one, and then up three, minus two. So you'd actually end up with a benefit. So that's actually quite good. Uh, let's look at this. What's the most efficient way? So you're the most efficient way to do that. And then we can just get the, the motorists. The motorists can be made happy with no real consequence. Yeah, sure, let's give that speech instead. Give the speech for 12 political capital. Yeah, speech. So as a result of that, uh, they're polling. Po no, go up. Go up. There we go. Government. Government. Taxing us. Government. Yes, everyone is happy. The capitalists like us plus 10%. I'm pretty happy. We seem to have made a big net gain there. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, does the speech get put in... Here, yeah. The speech gets put in here, plus 10%. I'm pretty happy with that. We just need to kind of stave off the capitalists so they stop trying to murder me. Oh, there's a load of stuff in transport that everyone seems to like. Biofuels can reduce oil demand. 94% of people like this, and it costs barely anything. Or we could introduce clean fuel subsidies. Okay, that costs almost nothing, and 91% of people like it. Free bus passes for retired age citizens. Yeah, those guys get out and vote. Bus usage can go way up, retired people like it, poor earnings go up, retired income goes up. That is just the sort of thing we need to be doing. Now, I really hope no one assassinates me because we're getting so damn close now. Capitalist plot, they're still plotting. Homelessness was just ended. Ban same-sex marriage? No. Allow marriage. The state has no reason to get involved in that sort of thing. Economic, the global economy is in recession. This is having negative on our GDP. Well, our GDP is fine. I'd say our GDP is much better than it was. We've basically eliminated all crime. I mean, bloody hell, lads. We have basically eliminated crime. And the capitalists are into yellow. I've got literally no one in red. That never happens in this game. Okay, um... How's popularity? Oh, 47%. We're not quite popular enough yet. How do we increase that popularity? Um, everyone. What does everyone like? Everyone likes... Well, they don't like the tobacco tax, apparently. Can I just cancel? Get rid of that entirely. It makes, like, nothing. Everyone is... Uh, but it has a good impact on... Hmm. The problem is there's health. It has a negative effect on tobacco use. I don't want to have the negative hit on health. No, don't use the political capital. Just come out of that. 
I need to find something that's really, really popular and just start implementing it like crazy. Because right now I think we should be not killed. Subsidized school buses. Parents will love that. Parents and bus usage. Go. Nice. Clean fuel subsidies. Nice. Environment, environmentalist, motorist, motorist income goes up. That'll have a good effect on the general economy. Perfect. There's some people in the Battenberg group, but the numbers are starting to fall and our security effectiveness is good. I think we should be safe, but we're getting really close to an election, mind. Uh, oh, failed assassination. Okay, failed. Island invaded. What island? Oh, remember that time I stripped the military back? And basically, it's uh, mostly ceremonial and reservists only. Oh dear. Yeah, uh, that's going to be bad. Everyone's annoyed at me because apparently I let the island get taken over. Oh dear. Um, yeah, the Patriots are really annoyed. How are we going to do this? We need to... We've got, like, only one turn left. I don't know if that means if I press... Oh no. Check out the manifesto. Okay, check out the manifesto option for the election. Good, I was about to say, does that mean start the election? No, we just need to manifesto like crazy. Okay, what are we going to do here? We need to... Ooh. Okay, we could offer to cut the flat income tax. People would like that. Uh, okay, Ra raise GDP by 50%. How can anyone pledge to do that? You can't pledge to do that thing. So all of these pledges, unfortunately, well, they could give me a boost, but, ooh, creation versus evolution raised by 50%. Raise in which direction? <laughs> I really hope towards evolution over creationism. Why? No, I'm not cutting the wiretapping. I've had two failed assassination attempts on my life in this parliament alone. We're not cutting the wiretapping. It's doing a good job keeping me not dead. I pledge to cut the flat income tax by 25%. That I pledge, all right? The capitalists, the middle income people like that. The, the poor like that too. The capitalists apparently barely care. Interesting. So the middle income people sort of like that. That's good. Uh, what else can we do here? I've got to do something. Increase GDP by 50%. That's one a hell of a pledge to make. I probably shouldn't make that pledge. I need to do something that's going to... Are they going to like border controls cut by 25%? Is that going to make the capitalists happy or not? Oh, manifestos are difficult. You know, I've got massive reserves. If I just go into a deficit for a bit to get these taxes down, that could work. What if I just lower the flat tax? I've got 36 billion of surplus right now. That's fine. And then if I reduce that by... I could meet my manifesto pledge before the flipping election. That'd be good. Now, this is going to cause a slight bit of... I don't want to cause debt, mind. I don't want to cause debt, but I'm willing to accept a reduction in income to, like, here. Yeah, that's good. Lower that by nine. Apply that change. Yeah, okay. Then, oh, bloody hell. We're so close. We're so close, but that bloody island had to go and get itself bloody invaded, didn't it? Bloody hell. Public libraries. Everyone likes public libraries. What else does everyone like? A few people like those. Healthcare vouchers no one cares about. Libraries. They'll come in pretty quickly. Just, yeah, education, equality, retired people like them. Go, fund the libraries. Fund fund anything that people like. Just whatever we need to do. Fund it. Rent controls. Oh, not everyone likes rent controls. Um, work safety or 75%. Like, that comes in immediately. Do it. Do it. Everything. The, who doesn't like that? Oh, the capitalists don't mind. Well, that's fine. That's A-OK. -okay. In that case, if the trade unionists like it. Um, wait, how many trade unionists do we have? Versus how many self-employed we have. Because I'm having a big impact on the... That's a really negative impact, isn't it? That's possibly hurting me more than anything else. Um, Yeah, we need some work safety. Work safety is a good idea. Oh, no. I think I don't know if this is the election. Or if I get one more turn to try and fix this mess. Oh, no. No, come on. Come on, no. Oh, it's time for the election. Please tell me that the bloody war against so-and-so didn't just cost me this election. Admittedly, I only had, possibly I may have been in a small state, which is, I only have 29 million spent on campaigning. The opposition spent a lot more than me. Oh no, and the turnout boost, because I didn't have any activists. Because, oh no! Boo! Why are there so many non-voters? Oh... That was much less close than I was anticipating. 
So as it turns out, I actually can't do a better job running this country than the current bunch of buffoons that are running this country incredibly badly can do. In fact, arguably, maybe I did a bit worse. I am frankly a little bit surprised it went that badly for me. I, the health of the nation is up 50%. Crime is down 92%. 92% crime, a 45% drop in all poverty. Technological advantage of this nation up 21 flipping percent. Productivity up 15%. Unemployment down 24%. Racial tension down 25 This is all... Very, very good. Nothing really bad happens. Like that tobacco use just happens to go up 7%. Possibly the stress from living in my mental hellhole of a country. Oh, that's a shame. Well, good luck, the People's Front of Judea. May you do better than the People's Party of Judea ever did. And so at the end of this experiment, ladies and gentlemen, maybe we've all learned something very, very valuable here today, which is possibly 94% tax rates can't solve all of your problems. A great many of them, but maybe not quite enough to win an election. And that's something that no world leader should really take on board because no world leader would probably be mad enough to try it. But that's how we learn through mad experimentation. I like Democracy 3. I love this case you're having an hour or two in Democracy 3. It's a lovely experience. Link in the description below to this and its new DLC electioneering which added all the kind of the election stuff which I suspect actually kind of adds a lot of nuance to how you get elected because certainly that interface had changed a lot from the last time I played this so I suspect this kind of makes the elections a lot more interesting which is good because actually it means like the pollsters can be wrong like sure my popularity was like just shy of 50% but I got nowhere near close to 50% the vote because I didn't have activists and I didn't have party funding so I didn't bother to take advantage of those so as a result of that even though I might have been 45% popular on the day I couldn't get people out to vote for me which is actually what happens in real elections that's a really cool little addition so yes there's democracy three there's me failing to run Britain again one of these days I'll run Britain and do it properly damn it so yes maybe more democracy three in the future ladies and gentlemen but in the meantime I've been John this has been many a true nerd and this has been democracy three oh, I love democracy Thank you very much, and goodbye. Oh, oh, cannibalism. Good, that's a useful thing. Good news, guys. Unless he rolls dreadfully, you should be safe. And that was a pretty dreadful roll. And now the ship doesn't explode. <laughs> Yay! Not explode, not explode, not explode. We're running out of dice again. Um, I wonder if there's any morphine left.